Robinson Show. Hey, what's up? What's up, <laughs> Felicia Rose, the People's Tramp? How are you? I'm wonderful. How are you? <laughs> good, good. good. It's uh, not so often we get to refer to a woman as the, the Tramp. So, how did you get the name, the People's Tramp? Um, it's kind of corny to say I gave it to myself, right? I gave it to myself. That's it it, kind of awesome, though. You know, if you, if you it got pulled it. off the tongue one day, you know, I'm a slut. It just happened. I don't know. We're all sluts. We're all sluts. We're all going to die someday. Like, just be, be, be sluts and have fun. <laughs> right, exactly. And I'm also, I do consider myself the tramp of the people. I truly feel like whether you come to me for, you know, sex advice or to get off or just to find solace in the fact that there's another cum guzzling whore out there. <laughs> That's essentially, I feel like that's my role you in society, it. so fuck it. You, know? you embrace it, and, and you're helping. You're doing a service, as as the people like, the people love. So, yeah. But you started um, by doing, um, like, sexually orientated uh, uh, wrestling signs, correct? I mean, I didn't, I didn't plan for that to be a thing, to be honest with you. It, was, it just happened. At a show, I was being goofy, and my seats were super far away, so it was really a sign that I made to, like, entertain my friends, really. I was drunk and being silly. Well, yeah, um, and that's... I was like, hey, women are always sexualized. Fuck this. Let's sexualize it, dude. Sex and then, um Sex out. It just, uh, I snuck down into a section that was closer where there was, like, empty seats, and then it just kind of blew up from there because by the time I, like, walked outside, it was on Botchamania. So, um, yeah, that's. And then I just continued. People were pissed off, obviously. Yeah. Like, uh, the girl can't be sexual. No She's harassing girls. people. No. And while I understand that side of it, and I do understand the, uh, I understand why people think that it could be seen as sexual harassment. Um, and I do not condone sexual harassment in any kind of sense. No, it wasn't, uh, that was never the intention. And it never was something that anybody ever told me they were uncomfortable with most actually eventually most people told uh knew ahead of time if i was going to hold a sign for them and then eventually it was like written into wrestling storylines so cool. i i do yeah. understand why i'm hated and that's fine uh sorry if your kid saw that <laughs> sign or whatever but if your kid knows what, what no flips just fist me means then you have more problems on your hand than my <laughs> sign in fucking class so. <laughs> yeah, maybe you're you're the problem. Bad parents. I don't know. What was the one? Because I was gonna yeah. ask you. You just said what one of them was, but I was curious if you can give some examples to what these signs had said. Sure. Um, so the first one said "Face fuck me, Finn," which was obviously that was like the uh, that was the first one. I never again. I would never want children to see such <laughs> vitriol on a side, you know so that was definitely not my intent in that at all yeah it just so happy i held it up for all of like fucking nine seconds anyways yeah. but still um then yeah. after that i decided to be a little bit more um you know punny with it so i did i did like a revival ripoff and i did no flips just fist me which made it into a shirt. Um, I did come here, rude boy, boy, is you big enough? <laughs> big rulers. That was fun. I like. Um, I did like silver bullet club, and silver bullets are a vibrator. Um, I did what the fuck else? Have I? I've done so many. Like I can't even remember half of them at this point. I have so many on sale now. Oh, one awesome. was like awaiting the resurrection, but I got it on TV because it said erection, but they didn't notice it was not a spell. They they were like, oh, she just. Spelled it wrong, but really, it was <laughs> she just made a lot of capitals on erection. Yeah, like, oh, so they would censor uh, your, your were your signs being censored on TV? Well, um, I never. So, I I personally never tried to even be on TV. People said that they saw it the first night live on NXT. I don't actually know if that's true. Maybe that's true. Either way, I never really was like, oh, I'm going to try to get on TV with like this really right. – I knew I would get kicked out if I did that, obviously. Yeah. Um, so I had to make it more tongue-in-cheek or punny or something that's like – so if I was close – like at one point I had like ring cider seats, and that's when I did like awaiting the resurrection with erection cause, because Finn Balor was no, not on the roster at the time or had just come back or something. So <laughs> essentially, um, yeah, like if I knew I would be on TV because of my seat, I would make sure it was something like – you know, a little less like over the top. Right. But yeah. at the same time, you know, I, I wasn't being censored. I just wasn't, you know, I was trying to like 
fly under the radar. Like one time I had a sign that said my sign is dirty and it literally just had dirt on it. <laughs> and that was not me. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Love it. Love it. But you started. Basically, I just like to make myself laugh. And I'm kind of a cunt because of it. So I don't know. <laughs> We're all cunts. You, me, yeah. this cunt. We're all cunts. Yeah. But you also got you also got a gig out of it, right? You you are a manager on, on wrestling. Well, I don't know if I'd say I got a gig out of it, but I got attention from it in the wrestling realm. And then from there, I became friends with somebody that was starting a promotion himself. And he was like, he, he was on my couch brainstorming like silly things to do at his promotion. And as a fan of wrestling, I was like, hey, why not like stuff like this and this? And he's like, what is, would you ever want to manage? And I was like, I don't want to take bumps because I'm like 30 and old and I'm in pain. But yeah, after 30, getting a hit is it's not fun. It's not fun getting a hit. Yeah, and the other, I like, I have migraines. A lot of people are like, why don't you train to wrestle? And I'm like, listen, I, I, I can do enough stuff that like, if I really, really wanted to, I could do some stuff and train and all that. But at the same time, like, my migraines aren't worth it. I really just, it, I probably would never ever be fucking cleared. So. It just became like a, if you will hire me to work and not have to take a bump or do like minimal physical things, like let my voice shine or let my character shine, then then we can work on it. And plenty of promotions have been cool with it. You know, they're like, yeah. I, it's not that I'm untrained to handle myself in a ring, but I'm untrained to do the stuff that other managers are doing. And I totally understand why people won't book me because of that. I mean, yeah. it's hard to, it's hard to kind of rationalize why would I pay Mind you, I'm not expensive, but it's hard to rationalize why would I pay for this person to say travel to me when she can only bring a limited thing to this. Mm. But at the same time, I, I always like bust my ass to promote and I always make sure that the fans that are going to the shows to see me fucking love me and want to make sure that they meet me after. And, you know, they're there in part to see me. So I try yeah. to make it an experience no matter what. And I try to make it your money's worth. But at the same time, I totally get why people like shit on me and they're like, this bitch doesn't belong in the ring. And I'm like, I get it. I, I see other valleys and managers untrained sometimes. And I'm like, Oh, like that. I, I get it. I understand. Yeah. But at the same time, I've never put myself in a situation where I was unsafe or I put anybody else in a, like I practice everything ahead of time. If there is a physical spot, you know, I'm very like, as much as I sound like I'm a, you know, a trucker loving whore. I'm mostly a professional businesswoman, and every thing I do is relatively calculated when it comes to, you know, something on that level. Like, I'm not going to make your fucking promotion look stupid by fucking something up, especially if it's a physical thing. You know, maybe I, I might miss a word on the mic, but I'm not going to, yeah. you know, put myself or your wrestlers in danger, essentially. So. Uh, I'm kind of curious, though, because I, I don't keep up on wrestling if Rob does more than I do. I, I do because of my kids. My kids are way into it. Yeah. And still, I, I can't keep track. I watch when they're up. I, we watch it together. But then when they're back at their mom's, like, my one son will message me, and I'm like, oh, cool. And he's like, no, that's not cool. He's a heel now. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> I can't even keep up with all this. <laughs> it's too it's much. Right, right. <laughs> but, but I was curious, so, like, what, like, what do managers usually do? Do they get, like, involved? Do they end up, like, wrestling? Like, I don't Sometimes know. Sometimes they get hit. Sometimes yeah. they get, they get choke slammed or... Managers, I mean, yeah, there's there's definitely a, a level of um, physicality. Of physicality to management. Oh, okay. And even, yeah. you know, even refs, for example, <laughs> are supposed to be trained to take bumps. So essentially, if you're walking in, aside from maybe, like, ring announcers, if you're walking into the ring, you are putting yourself in a position where you could be potentially taking a bump. And I think a yeah. lot of times people like the pop of the physicality of the person who's not supposed to be getting in, right. into it and physical, which is why I've found ways around it. I've done things like created my own little move called the tit splits, which is just a motorboat, but you know, <laughs> different things like that. It's like, I saw uh, you know, the wrestler I, who tit splits you. He, you thought you had him, but he came out to the ring and oh, he, yeah, he got you. Oh, yeah, that was, that was, that's that's amazing. Huge from that. You know, like things like that, like I, I really like to, to do like physical things where I am still it's very known that I'm not trying to get actually into the the, mm. the middle of the wrestling. I'm right. I'm more so trying to get my men or my women to win and I'll do whatever quote unquote whatever it takes to get them to win. So, you know, it's things like, you know, ripping open my shirt and shoving a chick's head into my tits but <laughs> rubbing it around you know things like that Obviously, asserting your dominance yeah <laughs> yeah you're the alpha female. level of you know entertainment <laughs> so. so felicia do you also do porn 
Yes. I mean, people say that I, I don't do porn or I'm not a porn star, but fuck you. I do porn and I'm a porn star because last time I checked, the only thing that pays my fucking bills is sex work. So I'm a fucking porn star. I cool. do porn and I've been doing it publicly for five years. Um, I've been doing it on many vids for the last two years and it's my only job. So wow. That's what I do. Pays the bills. I'm, I'm on SO as far as COVID goes. Like, uh, did, has that had a, had a damper on, on your work? Yeah, I mean, obviously we can't, us sex workers out there, we have to be really, really, really careful. We're not supposed mm. to be filming with other people. Or we're not supposed to be even, you know, having someone in the room filming for us. You know, there's so many different layers to it. So, of course, it's definitely hard. Um, it's It put a huge hole in my pocket at first because everybody was scrambling to be like, what do we do with our money? We want to hold on to it. We're all nervous about COVID, all this shit. And then there was, like, an uptick because people got bored and wanted to jerk off a lot. Yeah. I personally have kind of, like, a niche market. I have a lot of wrestling fans, but I also – I'm kind of a verbal fucking dynamo. I don't know what you want to call me, but people like me speaking for some reason. So I really, like, try to tap into that market when I can. The other problem is I have a lot of roommates in our home because they're all unemployed. So, like, I don't have the space to actually create content. Okay. So, like, kick these motherfuckers out. and then, <laughs> Get out there. Like, I gotta make some yeah, movies. Yeah, like, get on the roof, motherfuckers. <laughs> I got a fucking orgasm for three hours on camera because I'm shy. Like, oddly enough, I'm shy. I'm, I'm modest. I'm very, like, if you're not a part of the scenario, I don't want you hearing the scenario. Yeah. And they also don't want to trigger anybody. You know, I'd be, I'm talking about some weird shit in some of these porns, you know? Yeah, that, 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 there's a lot that comes shit. into it. Yeah, you don't want your roommate who's just there to, to live, like, hearing all that shit. Yeah. Right. Head, I'm a very mental person. Like, things can, things fuck me up mentally super easily. So, like, if I'm not feeling it, I'm not feeling it. And I, I, I commit myself to enjoy everything I make. So if I'm not enjoying it, I refuse to make it. Like, so, for example, if somebody's like, hey, I want you to make me a custom video of you doing X, Y, Z, mm. and I'm not comfortable with Z, you're not getting that because... I don't Good. want to ever portray anything that isn't 100% me enjoying myself. And I think that's why I have a fan base that keeps coming back because they understand, you know, these are real orgasms. These aren't fucking, this isn't me shaking my booty in the camera and trying to get your $5 a month on OnlyFans. Mm -hmm. Respect to all of those girls. I love them all. But I'm really there to actually provide an experience. I yeah. want people to connect with me. I want people to be able to say like, there's so many people in, you know, my messages every day or whatever, direct customers or people that buy from me online that say, like, you helped me through a bad time by being able to, like, open up about the fetish I like or whatever the fuck it is. And so it's, yeah. in a weird way, it's, like, partially sex therapy and partially porn. So Yeah, I, I feel like that sets you apart. I like, I feel like that's... In a different way. Yeah. What did you say? I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I feel like that sets you apart, like, where that's something totally, totally genuine and, and real. Yeah, like, I don't want to say you know, the other girls don't do that. Plenty of women out there do that. And plenty right. of men out there do that. And plenty of non-binary people out there do that. But I will say the compliments I receive are often in that realm of I've been looking for something more engaging or more whatever or where I can actually talk to the person and they reply and you are that person. And I'm like, great, that's awesome. I'm glad that I'm doing something right. Um, it doesn't mean I'm a fucking millionaire off of it. I'm still struggling every day to eat. But yeah. at the end of the day, those people are sexually satisfied. And that's literally, you know, every time somebody's like, go back to corporate America, you were making six figures, get it out of that. I'm like, yeah, but I was also fucking miserable and I wasn't making anybody else life fucking happy. So, like, why can't I spread love with my pussy? Fuck this. I'm going to make this shit work. If it's the last thing I goddamn do, it's my like life dream to be a porn star. So fuck it. Do it. Yeah. Do it. Well, you got that. Yeah. You got that. <laughs> <laughs> goddamn. But you also do a podcast and I, I love it. I listened to some last night. I know Slim listened to some today called The Screw and it's with a guy named A-Love. Yes. So The Screw, so the screw actually was just it's been through many iterations. We started our a vlog, like a like a like an actual vlog back fucking twelve twelve years ago, I wanna say. Yeah, twelve years ago before I moved to Brooklyn. And it was about sex and we were trying to teach people all sorts of stuff. It was like sex 
sex education plus us talking about like our deviant behaviors and trying to normalize it and making it, you know, the nonchalance of sex is essentially what I go by. And, and that's what I wanted to do. And then that a love and I, we ended up um, moving apart. Like we first, we moved to Brooklyn together, but then we moved apart. And so we that just kind of died. Then oh. when we moved back to New York city, we're like, yeah, let's fucking do this shit again. So I had been toying with it in a studio set up setting and it wasn't, setting for me it was to like lights camera action be funny or be you know and i'm like i'm not i want to just like kind of sit back and talk like smoke a blunt and talk about fucking you know what i mean and like <laughs> make it make it sound like somebody sitting on their living room couch and explaining to you what your vast deference is and how to milk your prostate so that you don't get fucking cancer you know shit like that <laughs> and then also explain to you like my five gang gang stories this is like what we wanted so <laughs> that turned into the screw, which is great. It's it's been in a lull because of COVID and just mental health stuff going up and down. Like we're everybody's a fucking mess right now. We know that. Yeah. So we're we're trying to get back into it. But the other part is that we're creating a podcast network for it, not just for the screw, but for queer people in general. We want to uplift queer voices, people of color, queer voices of color, and we are essentially going to use that as you know, sort of a anchor podcast to kind of do a shoot off of a bunch but like for example right now we have um a brand new podcast that's about to be released and this is going to be called new queer order whenever this fucking shit comes out but the podcast itself is a trans woman of color talking about her fucking experiences and like that's sort of what i wanted to do is like that's not awesome. just me it well too obviously we wanted to create a door to open it to other people we're two yeah. white people talking about our experiences we don't need to hear all of that there's too much of that shit out there so it's still good to hear to but uh, yeah could, like bring in other voices and and give them a platform and uplift them so we're currently working That's on that cool. we have an awesome producer named b shout out to b and cameron Jarrell is going to be the first podcast that we have going out is uh, Tranos and the live experience. I just recorded the intro to it. So I'm super excited to just get to have the screw, whatever what happens with the screw is whatever, but I'm really excited for that to be like a jump off for other people to be able to get their voices heard. That's fucking awesome. And yeah, I, I, I just was going to ask how you met uh, A Love, but if it sounds like you've known him for a long time. We met in human sexuality psychology class in oh. our junior year of college. And it was like an eight person nighttime course at like a school, uh, like a college that was, you know, like, what the fuck, not community college, but a state college. There you go. I'm like, where did I go? <laughs> you know, so we had, this, I'm so dumb with this. So we had this like, you know, ability to sort of be a little bit less fucking professional in that setting, I guess. And yeah. we're all in a circle one day and the teacher had said something funny about, not funny, but was just talking about something dirty. And I made a joke and, he looked across at me and was like, fuck, you're he, hilarious. You're my new best friend. And we literally it. just became best friends from yeah. that. Wow, and then that's we awesome. started our, we, we had an LGBTQ organization that was about to die. Like we were about to lose all of the money from it because nobody kept it up. Nobody like uh, reinstated the charter for it. So then we were like, fuck it. Let's make a fucking LGBTQ organization on campus. So we did that and we fucking provided you know hiv testing on site and all this other shit and a, a safe space for people to come and actually just be queer and be themselves so that was beautiful and then from there that's yeah. kind of where we got the idea to do um the vlog that ended up into a podcast which is what we're talking about right now very cool yeah the show i feel is just chill smart and thought-provoking like i that that was the main things i got from it it's really cool you guys talk about whatever is going on in your lives and it just is a really good experience oh thanks well i appreciate that it's um it like i said it died out for a little bit but we're definitely getting back into it and we want to really dive deep into some other shit because you know there's all sorts of things that i haven't talked about yet on there like trauma for example and we need to talk about those things it's okay to say that you have had a traumatizing past but you still have a healthy relationship with sex for example so yeah different things like that like we gotta. We're gonna stop doing this, like, you know, just goofing around kind of shit, and we're gonna do a little bit more serious stuff here and there. But then I'll still talk about my gangbangs, obviously, because everybody wants to hear that. So. What? Well, yeah, tell us about some gangbangs. What's uh, the craziest thing that's <laughs> happened in, in a gangbang, Felicia? <laughs> um, I'll say the weirdest thing that ever happened in gangbang was somebody like. <laughs> 
felt morally corrupt and left during it. Wow. <laughs> Whoa! I, I, yeah, no, I, I, I have to rethink this. Like, I, I got it wrong. Like, wow. Like, yeah, I feel like if you're there, if you're committed, like, that's where it's going to go down. Wow. Well, well so I, I, I have found in my uh, porn addiction, I have found uh, Chesek gangbangs, which I love, and it's like a hundred men just fucking one girl. But a oh. lot of them will wear like mask and shit because they're like apparently mm. like yeah. high up like government officials and stuff I've that are trying to wear hide the masquerade their masks. Yeah. Like, yeah, <laughs> they wear a teddy bear. These guys yeah. dress like a teddy bear. <laughs> like, that's yeah, cool. There's, there's people that want to film with me and they're like only if i can wear a mask like, yeah. fucking whatever like, no one wants to see your fucking stupid face no. they just want to see your dick in yeah. my mouth that's the, it the dick in, in the <laughs> hole that's that's what we all want to see we all want to see we don't, we don't want to see the face yeah i mean yeah, of I, the guy trust me it's everybody out there wants to see something different but yeah i feel like more often than not it's my face people are focusing on if they're clicking on my video. So it's like, you know? did, did that kill the horniness in the room though? When that guy like walked out that right. every the other, other guy just like, gets soft. Like, I what? need an extra fluffer over here. You that know, guy. Honestly, like filth kind of like drives me. So if I know something's like extra naughty, like, Oh, this turns you off so bad that you got to leave or whatever the fuck. Like, fuck. Yeah. Let's go. Oh yeah. Harder. That took a next we'll level. Kind of thing. I love it. I love it. Awesome. But I wonder, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm kind of curious about that guy now. Like, was it a guy that just, like, loved gangbang porn and was like, I'm going to be in one of yeah. these and was just and like, this just is like, not what I, minute. like, this isn't right. Wait a minute. <laughs> there, was there was no camera there. He just was a, invited into a scenario by his friend who was... Oh kind of the I, the person that set it up was the only person I knew in the situation. Oh, okay. He set this five-person gangbang up and oh. it was a bunch of buddies or whatever. I can't exactly say where it was, but it was like yeah. a place where men hang out together. And uh, um, <laughs> and he set this shit up and I guess one, I don't know if the guy had a girlfriend or what the fuck the problem was, but yeah. he was just like, I, I'm oh, I'm oh, I can't do this. <laughs> He just agreed to it because he wanted those cool he wanted points to with his buddy. His yeah, he, he was, was like, yeah, I'm down with this. And he was like, yeah, wait yeah, a minute. Bro, fuck this shit so hard. Yeah, bro, I gotta go with my stomach hurts. <laughs> Damn. Uh, uh, Felicia, I want to ask you. the first time I grossed a person out. So <laughs> 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 Love it. I want to ask too, do you have a lot of people um, contact you on how to get into the adult industry? Um, I do, but also it's sort of kind of out there now. It takes like two seconds to figure it out. But I have like <clears throat> my one of my last podcasts explains like that, you know, go through like 10 suggestions for like starting and, you know, I, I almost say OnlyFans, but I don't even use I fucking denounce OnlyFans. I hate that site. I, so, I, like, I've, starting, I've only heard of it, of people talking about it. But is that like the entry? Is that like the gateway drug? The the OnlyFans? <laughs> like, I I don't know. I mean, I think there's there's levels to this shit, right? So some people say all of it is sex work to me, but essentially there are people who are just taking photos and they're just showing off their bodies and they're like, listen, I don't do porn. Please stop asking me to like get railed on camera. And I actually kind of feel bad for a lot of those girls because or, or men. I shouldn't. I'm not. I'm sorry. I'm I'm fucking labeling it as just girls, but. Um, I feel bad for those people because a lot of times there's this expectation set because it's like, well, I can buy $5 of an OnlyFans from this person over here who gets railed and takes loads to their face. Or I could buy, buy a $5 OnlyFans from you and all I'm going to see is maybe like your booty cheeks and your pussy. Yeah. I don't ah. know. Maybe I'm going to go with the other person. So it, it is sort of like it, def it definitely depends on if the person has like fans and blah, blah, blah. And, how, and so I do feel like some people end up doing more than they uh, you know originally signed up for because they realize they need to but i don't think you need to i think that there's a market for everything and i think that everybody out there can show off whatever the fuck they want and somebody will buy it it takes some work it takes some time it takes a ring light and it takes a clean room but <laughs> you can do it and it's not something to feel bad about just because you're not willing to like scarf down an eight inch dick on camera that's okay you don't have to do that you you are just as fucking respectable as anybody that's, you know, taking a dick in their ass and pussy at the same time. You know what I mean? Yes. So I, I, I don't want to say it's like the gateway, but it's definitely, there's, there's different levels to it, but 
I feel like a lot of people first make it OnlyFans for, okay, let me try it. Let me, like, dabble in this. Let me get more comfortable with my body and things like that. And I think that's beautiful. I think it's so cool to see this influx of people that are just like, this is my fucking body. Like, let's celebrate that shit. I yes. will say I I also feel bad because I understand that there's repercussions from having that kind of stuff out there. So I know personally. I will never be able to be hired in a corporate situation unless they're fucking cool about that shit, you know, and that's very rare. So, but I also take dick on camera. So it's like, there's a balance to it. And I understand people, you know, people's comfort levels, that's their own. And I, I hope nobody like ever, you know, if you sign up, well, I should say this for the people listening that do subscribe to things like a many vids or an only fans or whatever site, don't ever shame someone for not doing something that they aren't comfortable with that's fucked up don't do it if you are disappointed with what you purchased too bad move on with your fucking move on exactly exactly uh one of our close friends is a phone sex girl um and she she's had guys dumb enough to buy an audio twice and give her bad reviews just because they they were like i already had this audio Mm. Like you, right, you're right. the dumb fuck that bought that the bought same a, the audio same twice. Her name is Ryder now. Like she does amazing, amazing what she does. But yeah, every now and then she get a bad review just because the, the dummy bought a an audio twice. Like that's your fault, oh. motherfucker. I, I'll say this, and I don't know if I'm opening myself up to the trolls that fucking hate me that are now gonna go like fucking ruin my shit. But I've only had one person ever be like, I'm disappointed, and it was because he said I sounded like a banshee coming. <laughs> What? It's, it's kind of like, hot, though, if that's yeah, what you sound like. I'm, I would say I'm the Banshee it. fetish guys were like, fuck yeah, I'm banshee buying this. Banshee guys are all I'm, over this. I want a Banshee. I was like, oh, I'm sorry. that by, I, I don't know. I, I don't, I, I didn't even know what to do. I felt bad for like a minute, and then I was like, why? Why do I feel bad? Like that? I'm sorry that my organic orgasm is a turnoff for you. I like, would uh, use you that as a selling you point. Six bucks. Yeah. Like I'm sorry. Bro. You like, you, you ain't ever heard a banshee like come it. like this. Banshee comes. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. So if you like hearing a banshee come or uh, a chick tell you what to do with her dick, I'm the girl. <laughs> I do want to say one thing before we wrap this up is you said earlier that one of the things you need is a clean room. Well, I want to see a girl get fucked in like a room that I live in, like just a pile of clothes, (laughs) a lot of cat hair, a lot of cat hair and just empty beer bottles, a lot of shame, fruit flies. (laughs) (laughs) No, no, I'm saying like, like, when you want to advertise your shit. Now, I will say, people like seeing things that are realistic. Like, they want me to fuck ugly people in porn and shit like that. Dirty laundry all over the place. But I I personally, aesthetic-wise, I always suggest to at least, like, tidy up because it's distracting. That's all. You know? Like, if you're... This fruit fly here. I can't come with the fruit fly here. I just remember, I don't know if you, y'all have ever seen uh what the fuck is it is it Desperate Housewives with fucking the the redheaded chick and she's like trying to fuck her husband in a motel and there's like a burrito falling <laughs> off the table and she like can't concentrate that's me like I I just I personally like a nice clean background um I I tried to up my game in trying to provide said clean background I just think it's a distracting thing no shame to anybody that wants to get fucking down and dirty on your pizza boxes on your blood go for it That's what it there is a market for that 100% pizza guys I personally think it's nicer to see a nice clean setup just because I don't know when I see that I think UTI yeast infection <laughs> all the best awesome God, thank damn. you love thank you Felicia this has been amazing I'm anyone I'm no. talking me personally it's where my brain goes I see a dirty room I immediately now I'm not talking about like a check glory hole situation give me all the come and piss everywhere that's hot yeah. but, that, I'm talking like that works if it's there. your bedroom and you didn't like push in your drawer and I can see your fucking t shirt stolen out, it's distracting. <laughs> I want to fold them for you. I'm too O C D for that shit. Felicia, where can everybody find you? Um, you can find me on Twitter at Felicia Rose. You can find me naked on Twitter at Felicia Rose Raw. You can find me on many vids, Felicia Raw dot many vids dot com. And you can find me on Instagram at People's Tramp. 
My podcast is The Screw NYC on both Instagram and Twitter. And um, those that podcast you can download from fucking everywhere. So, like, anywhere you get your podcast. And if it's not up somewhere, it's because we fucked up something and we'll fix it soon. So just find it. You'll find it. It's awesome. Fine. Awesome. Thank you so much for talking about this. You rock. Well, thank you for having me. It was delightful, and I hope um, uh, everybody enjoyed hearing about me taking loads to my face. <laughs> is that a good sign offline? I don't fucking know. That is. That is. is. That is... Like, like in seclusion for months. I don't. I don't know how to act anymore. I'm acting wild and crazy. So. This is good as it can, Felicia. We will. We will talk soon. Take care, Felicia. <laughs>